Welcome to Times Media and the St. Cloud Times Editorial Board endorsement interviews for the 2008 elections. The Editorial Board is the voice behind the Times R View, which appears daily on the opinion page and website. Board members are conducting this and other interviews involving races and issues on your 2008 Election Day ballot. Board members are Times Media Publisher and President Bill Albrecht, Executive Editor John Bodette, Opinion Page Editor Randy Krebs, Community Representative Dory Larison, and Times Building Manager Mark Hessler. The board has neither say nor involvement in directing Times news coverage. Similarly, Times reporters are not involved in this endorsement process. Okay, we will move to our long answer questions again. Two minutes is what we're looking for uh, with follow-ups as needed by our board. We will start now with Steve as we continue down the road. Uh, first question, first topic, education funding. What are your specific plans for it in this coming two-year term? Well, first of all, I'll start out with my track record on education funding. Uh, you may recall last time I ran for office, uh, 2006, I made a commitment uh, that I was going to support Minnesota making education its top funding priority. Um, I followed through on that, supporting early childhood education funding, K-12 through education funding, post-secondary education funding. Uh, so. Adequate funding is an important issue, and I understand that, and, and we've got that as a big issue in this fall's election. But we need to look beyond education funding. The conversation constantly, and this frustrated me a great deal down at the legislature, is constantly on the dollars and not on how we improve education. The three most important things in education, if we want academic success, world-class outcomes for our kids, which we need if we're going to boost Minnesota's economy, is first of all parental engagement, Second of all, quality of teachers. And third of all, classroom size. I talk to the researchers, they'll tell you those are the three most important factors. So what are we doing to increase parental <coughs> engagement and guardian engagement in kids' education? What are we doing to help our teachers succeed in the classroom? I've door knocked many public school teachers who are frustrated with Education Minnesota's fees, with the fact that they're not getting relief in the classroom from all the distractions from core education that they need to have uh, alleviated so that they can get at teaching our kids, educating our kids. Our school districts are not there to raise our children, they're there to educate our children. And then thirdly, the classroom size. When we get additional funding, where are those dollars going? Are they going to decrease classroom size by increasing in-classroom teaching resources, or are they going to other things? And those are questions that need to be addressed more openly. There are dozens of others. No Child Left Behind is a big concern. Uh, unfunded mandates are a big concern, but we have got to look beyond the funding. Funding is very important, and I've certainly stepped up to the plate on education funding. I, I don't think anybody could say otherwise looking at my voting record, but we've got to look past that to what we know helps our kids succeed. We need classroom innovation. We also need to look at both public and private education and school choice. It's very important. All right. Joshua. Oh, wait, can I, real quick. Steve, you had classroom size, parental involvement, and what was the other one? Uh, parental engagement, three. classroom size, quality of teachers. Quality of teachers, thank you. Okay. All right, Joshua, do I, should I repeat the question? Or you? Uh, nope, that's okay. fine. All right. Um, you know, one of the things we have to focus on, especially this session as we get down there, is that we're facing a very large deficit. Um, and I am one who believes that, that education is not one that should be cut uh, when we're looking at uh, at fixing this budget issue. Um, education is going to be what drives our uh, the job creation and the economy. We need to educate our students so they come out with uh, a readiness to actually get out into the workforce or go on to further education in college and things along those lines. Um, and if we don't start at an early age and focus on getting the right funding to the right schools and focusing on students and classroom sizes, we're never going to allow those students to grow to the point of being able to be uh, good workers when they uh, when they move beyond college. You know, I believe very strongly that every student in Minnesota is equal. Um, I know people differ on that, but I don't think our students in St. Cloud deserve a per pupil number less than those in Minneapolis and St. Paul. I think every student from every different town has the opportunity to grow and do the best for their life. We see some of the um, some of the most successful people in the country have come out of small towns and if we if we diminish what their capabilities are in education they're never going to get the opportunity that uh, that students in, in bigger schools might um, I also believe very strongly in parental involvement 
uh, reading to students. My son loves to pick up books all the time before bed and, and try to extend his bedtime a little bit by reading. And I have no problem with that because I think that's such an important part is to get parents involved. And to reward good teachers is another important aspect too. Um, I've had many teachers that have uh, that I've talked with. I've had teachers that have walked in my in the parade uh, and volunteered on the campaign. And um, they're good teachers, and they deserve to be rewarded for the good work that they're doing. Um, if a teacher has uh, is not performing up to the standards, they should be given the uh, given adequate review and constructive criticism, and then moved uh, moved on from that point. If uh, if things don't improve, just like in private sector business. Any follow-ups? Okay, Larry. Uh, thank you. As you notice in my introduction, um, I originally was a teacher. Uh, I have a certificate in teaching. I have majors in mathematics and, and biology. And, uh, I enjoy teaching and I enjoyed coaching a great deal. I also have five family members that are involved in uh, teaching, from special education all the way to college. Our system is a, a built up a little upside down right now. Uh, we have a constitutional requirement that we're supposed to be providing equal education to our students. But our school districts are not equal. Our school district uh, has, since when I started, from 18% to 23% in special education requirements. I carried, and yes, across the party line, I, car I carried a bill uh, to help that underfunded mandate. But that's a stopgap. We need a revamping of our whole system. We have 300 of our 340 districts under, um, under special levy going to our tax base. Those should be switching, those cores should be switching to the responsibility of the state. And if that requires that we raise the tax to do that, that we cause wiggle room, then we should do that. Passing it down to the property tax is not a no new tax pledge. I want excellence, but I want fairness. And I want fairness for 742 and the other core uh, school districts that are having difficult making it because of the unequal challenges. Okay. Follow -ups? Joanne. There, there will oh, be, wait. but not yet. Okay, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Um, I would uh, move Minnesota to a way of funding schools that reflects the real needs of students. Uh, we have set, we have many mandates. We have hopes and dreams and aspirations for our students. We have goals. We need accountability that we are reaching the standards that we set for our students. At the same time, we also have to realize that not every student in Minnesota is the same, but every student in Minnesota deserves an equal opportunity to to achieve. And we're we have trouble facing that right now. We you know di students in special education, of course, are more expensive they have difficulties learning. Students w learning English, we need to spend some time teaching them English so they can achieve. So there are different factors and costs, and I would work with the formula to reflect that. There's been a proposal at the end of last session that was a good proposal uh, that should be out on the floor for discussion and uh, compromise as needed. Um, so, it, <laughs> sorry. Um, our funding in Minnesota has not kept up with the mandates or with inflation. And we do have 300 out of 340 districts with levies. These levies, I can assure you, are not asked for because it's fun to ask for a levy. They're not asked for because we want to throw money out the window. They're asked for because we feel they're necessary for the basics of education. It's the constitutional responsibility of Minnesota to provide that basic of education for every student. In the meantime, we can also look, so we should, we should evaluate our mandates. Do we need those? Are they, and if we, if we require them, we should pay for them as a state. We shouldn't expect local districts to pay for mandates. We, and I'd like to say, you know, point out that my opponent actually has not voted for early childhood funding, K-12 education, and higher education. 